Tick tock, time to rock. How's everyone doing? <clears throat> <laughs> what happened? Nothing. Well, because you laugh. Yeah, I, I laugh. I laugh because, uh, because, uh, <laughs> they don't know all the horrible technical difficulties that go on. Um, yo, yo, yo. Hey, Sam. Yes, sir. Before we, uh, before we get ready here, before mm -hmm. we get ready, hey, look at this. Look, okay. I mean, we sit there and tell them what we're going to discuss. Have have they ever wanted to discuss what we're ready to discuss? No, we know that. That's the pattern, right? Pattern is they change the topic because they're scared. Divinization. Oh, hang on. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Already starting. <laughs> Here you have Riddle Factory, who's a Muslim. Allah commands. Allah do not pray from anyone. I don't know what you mean by from. You mean to? Allah does not pray to anyone? Is that correct? Hey, Sam. Um, yes, sir. So we are going to be going through Adnan's uh, latest, and we started a bit earlier than normal. For European viewers who um, who can't catch us at our normal time, I'm going to try to do this uh, about once a week, uh, go live earlier in the day for people who can't catch our normal live streams because it's the middle of the night for them and uh that's convenient because adnan rashid he is uh he is our good friend in the uk so this is an earlier time people can catch us now sam yes sir. um we're gonna go through his latest which yep. it, for real i mean you haven't even watched it but I, yes. I, I've, I've watched it and adnan doesn't seem to be getting better he seems to be getting worse no. Yeah, I expect that because he's refuting <clears throat> the irrefutable. In other words, we're simply citing the Quran in its context. We're not taking snippets out of context. We've even appealed to the Hadith. And folks, I want you to pay attention. And this is a testimony to the glory of Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus be magnified, glorified. May he wash us in his precious holy blood. The blood of the Lamb fill us with the Holy Spirit. Use us to magnify the name of Jesus Christ, the Father's beloved Son. Notice that we try as Christians, and I try as a Christian, David tries as a Christian, to be as accurate as possible to what another religion or worldview teaches. Because remember, <clears throat> we serve the God of truth. Psalm 31 verse 5, God is said to be the God of truth. The Holy Spirit is said to be the Spirit of truth. If you go to John 14, verse 16, 17, and in 26, he's identified as the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Because God is a God of truth, we who follow him must also seek the truth at all costs, even if that truth <clears throat> may in some way affect us. So my goal, David's goal, and any true Christian who loves Jesus, our goal is to seek the truth and be as honest, even when we're representing a view that we don't agree. So far, Adnan Rashid has been the very one doing what the Quran says Jews and Christians do. Mm -hmm. Adnan shamelessly perverts the context of the Quran, takes snippets out of the Quran, employs inconsistent methods and criteria that, once they're turned around against him, does greater damage to the Quran and to the credibility of Muhammad, as we will see in this session. So Adnan again miserably fails to refute us, but in trying to refute us, he ends up exposing Muhammad to further shame and ridicule, exposing Muhammad as a fraud. All glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Adnan. If I didn't know any better, <clears throat> I would think that Christians are paying you to help us expose Muhammad for being the fraud that he is. For the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, Sam, uh, Riddle Factor here, it, 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 it sounds like he's trying to say that Allah does not pray. Is that true or is that completely false? Does Allah <laughs> does Allah pray or not? Oh, man. Because you, 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 have, you, have other, you have other people here. Uh, so here you have a Saitama fan who's, yeah. who's titled uh, Just a Hero for Fun. He says, if I was a Muslim, I think I would leave Islam right away when I heard that Allah and his angels pray. Yes, Yes, and, and here's the thing, what, what's sad. No matter how many times we repeat the same argument, mm -hmm. it's like it falls on deaf ears. And I want to remind our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, it is truly spiritual warfare. Behind the scenes and even when we go live, Satan is attacking because he sees by the power of the Holy Spirit we're doing great destruction against his kingdom, his kingdom of darkness and lies. 
part of which includes Islam. But Jesus Christ our Lord is almighty over the devil, and he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So may the Lord Jesus, <clears throat> by his spirit, enable Muslims to see and hear and remove the blindfolders from their eyes in Jesus' name. Because again, we've said this over and over again, but I don't mind repeating it for the glory of Christ if Muslims will get saved as a result by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me mention the three passages. We're not even referring to the Hadith. We've done sessions on this. I have articles on this. David has articles on this. But I'm going to mention the three passages. Chapter 2, verse 157. Write this down. And those of you who speak Arabic are going to confirm what the Arabic says because, again, Muslims like Adnan do the very thing the Quran condemns Jews and Christians for doing, twisting their words from their places by their tongues. In other words, they shamelessly butcher and shred the Quran because they don't want non-Muslims who don't know Arabic to know what the Quran actually teaches if you look at the original language. But glory to Jesus, we're going to expose that for the glory of Christ. 2.157, mm -hmm. chapter 33, verse 43. Chapter 33, verse 43, and chapter 33, verse 56. In those three passages, you will see that Allah prays. And the words used in 2.157 is salawat. And all you Arabic speakers, confirm for the non-Arabic speakers here, salawat is plural. It's the plural. It means prayers. And then in 3, 3343, 3356, it uses the verb salah. For example, in 2.157 it says, Upon them is the salawat, the prayers from their Lord, of their Lord, and His mercy. It uses salawat and rahmah, two different words, so they can't mean the same thing. In 3356, it says that Allah is He who prays for you, as do His angels, so that you may be guided out of darkness into light. That's 3343. 3343. He it is who prays for you. Sorry, I almost got to shut down for, for a minute because of satanic distractions. But the Lord Jesus rebuke all distractions. And then in 3356, it gets worse. 3356, it says, Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. You salun, you saluna from Salah. Allah and his angels pray for his prophet. And you who believe also pray, salu for him and greet him with a worthy salutation. Mm -hmm. Anyone who speaks Arabic will admit, unless he's a Muslim who's been indoctrinated, demonized, to try to deny the obvious, the verb salah means prayer. Salawat is plural, it means prayers. But even if you want to say that salah can't mean prayer, because it has to mean something different when Allah is <clears throat> the subject of praying, well, you can't say that if you're going to look at 3356, because it says Allah is joining the angels in performing the same act. It says Allah and the angels <clears throat> perform Salah. So if Salah means, in reference to the angels, that they are praying for Muhammad, then how are you going to change the definition of that same verb when Allah is included with the angels? So it's Allah and the angels performing the same action. If it means prayers when the angels do it, it has to mean prayers when Allah does it. You can't get around it contextually, mm -hmm. grammatically, linguistically. Yeah, I I, uh, I know a Quran only Muslim, so a Muslim who uh, refuses to uh, interpret the Quran in light of the Hadith, and uh, so he he told me first of all that that re reciting the Shahada is shirk because you're putting Muhammad you're putting Muhammad up in there, in your uh, in your uh, in your testimony. But uh, I asked him about prayer, and he said, uh, he said, well, we, we don't, it, it, he's not speaking for all Quran-only Muslims here. This is his conclusion. He said when he doesn't actually pray in terms of, of talking to God, he goes around and does nice things for people. He blesses them. And I said, what? Where, where, are, you, where are you getting that from? He says, well, since the Quran says that Allah prays, <laughs> since Allah says I mean, since the Quran says that Allah prays and that therefore the angels join him in prayer and that we are supposed to pray too, but it can't mean that Allah is praying like Muslims like Muslims pray, even though it's using the same term. It can't mean that. Therefore, it has to mean that Allah is just blessing people. And therefore, when we're supposed to pray, it means that we're supposed to go out and bless people. 
Yeah. And so yeah. notice he, he's acknowledging everything there. He's just, uh, he, but the, the result is you e guys, you either have to do that. You have to give up prayer, right? Because you have to say, well, it means blessing. Well, great. Then angels and Muslims are supposed to do it too. Therefore, it would mean blessing. When you do your salah, you're supposed to be uh, going around blessing people or something like that. Or if you want to say it means praising or whatever you want to, whatever you want to say it means because you want to ignore the word. Um, yeah. So those are your options there. Yep. But no. Let me correct something. Black Tuesday films, because again, he's a Mohammedan who mm -hmm. likes to slander. Just to correct you, what I just said, and I'm not trying to boast, I give glory to the Lord Jesus, glory to the Holy Spirit. May he fill David and I and all of us more and more to be more like Jesus, to glorify him. All right, wait, I right. have no script before me. He's saying, Sam is reading from, I don't have a script. And the no, reason why I'm looking no. straight. Sam's but, brain is his script. I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure Black Tuesday films is a Muslim. He says uh, Adnan keeps refuting David and Sam, but won't, oh. but won't debate them. Yeah, because he says Sam is reading from a pre-prepared pre script. So in other words, I guess he's uh, maybe referring to me. I just want to give no. glory to the Holy Spirit. The reason why I look ahead is because when I'm asked a question, what happens to me is the, the information passes through my mind. So that's why I'm looking. It's not because right here it's in the kitchen. So and the cron browser is not working. So what mm -hmm. I just shared with you is from memory, and I give the Holy Spirit glory for that ability. May perfect it in us and increase our love for Jesus, so that Jesus gets the glory. I just want to be clear. Yeah, guys, we don't I, come with prepared speeches. Yeah, I've known Sam for years, and when he looks at something, it's to actual, it's to to read something, it's to read an actual passage or something like that. He will look at it like that. Uh, as far as him recalling verses and so on and, and recalling points, he just fires them off. Uh, look here, searching truth. Who's a Muslim says, can we get over? Can we get over this praise topic, please? You have repeated you the, it. Up, man. You have repeated this a million times. Yeah, I come in here, and the Muslims are the ones complaining about it, and everyone else is is laughing at them for it. But guys, stop bringing it up. Or better yet, acknowledge that your God prays. Here's here's what here's what you should say as a Muslim. Here's what you should say as a Muslim, and we'll drop it. Right? We'll drop it. Yes, the Quran and the Hadith declare that Allah prays. As Muslims, we don't know what this means. We, we cannot figure this out. We cannot make yep. sense of it. We don't know if Allah is talking to himself or to someone else. We just don't know. But since we have no clue what's going on and our God prays, therefore, uh, we've clearly got a bigger problem than you got, than you Christians have, when we complain about Jesus praying. Since you Christians are Trinitarians and it makes perfect sense for the Son to speak to the Father, uh, therefore, we're going to drop that objection. We'll never bring it up again. We'll never bring up any of the passages where Jesus speaks to the Father and present these as a problem for Christians because we are clearly the ones with a problem because we're Unitarians and our God prays. Say that yeah. and we won't bring it up anymore. But if you keep bringing it up and responding to it and then expect us not to uh, refute your lies, then, then, yeah. By the way, uh, David, we have someone here who's been like a thorn in our side. He claims to be a Christian, Mark Zero. No matter what we do, he comes and he tries to take cheese shots at us and distract us because he can't focus on the topic and he just likes to slander us. So he's getting to be a very boring, tiring person and he claims to be a Christian. So Mark Cyril, do yourself a favor. Control yourself, behave yourself. It's not about you. It's not about you trying to get attention, slandering us. We're trying to focus on winning Muslims for the glory of Christ. If you can't help, say nothing because you're a nuisance and a distraction. What's he okay, saying? Mark Cyril? Uh, he's pretty much taking shots at <clears throat> at me for saying, oh, yeah, this guy was just joking, but he insulted Sam. And earlier he took other shots, and in previous sessions he's been taking shots uh, because he's upset that uh, over the fact of the canon. Remember when we were discussing 66 books, 73 books? Mm -hmm. Right. And this guy, I guess he's a Catholic and he was very upset and angry and livid that we would even bring it up as a topic. And he says, I guess you'll never convert to he was, the, the faith. You know, you know, you're just stubborn. So he's here to preach his sectarian bias and cause division. But oh, well. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, if he's causing problems, I went ahead and uh, blocked him. Um, does that make you happy, Sam? Does that make you happy? No, I, have, I, have, I have no idea what this dude did. I have no idea what this dude did, but because he's annoying Sam, I just block him because yeah, I'm in a blocking kind of mood with everything that's no, been no, going the wrong today. No, reason why, I just want to be clear <laughs> to people. I just want them to understand your channel. Yeah. David's channel. Let me. My channel is a little different because I do go into the Christian doctrines, as does David, but in the context of reading Muslims. How many times we're going to say that here we're not interested in bringing up the differences between yeah. Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox? David wants to help all Christians of all branches of Christianity 
to refute Islam, to get Muslims saved. And David, do you care whether a Muslim becomes Catholic, Orthodox, or Protestant? Do well, you, do you mind? It, 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 it's an issue, but I would I would rather him leave Islam and become Catholic, I'm, Orthodox, or Protestant and, and leave Islam than, than anything else. Worship the triune yeah. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so yeah. that's the whole point. Now, of course, I'm evangelical. I hold the sola scriptura, sola fide. That's what I believe the Bible teaches. Uh -huh. If you want to have a discussion with me, come to my channel. Or we'll do a Skype session. Not here. The mm -hmm. focus is winning Muslims to, to Jesus Christ. Help us. And if you want to then have a discussion with me some on, on your channel, my channel, on the differences, let's do that. But guys, it's about exposing Islam for the glory of Jesus, not bringing our sectarian biases here so that Muslims can laugh at us and say, you see, you Christians can't even figure it out. Even though people living in glass houses shouldn't be throwing stones because even their house is divided more so than ours mm -hmm. with the Sunni divide, you know, Ashari, Athari, Maturidis, uh, you know, Tasawwuf, etc., etc. So, but anyway, let's focus for the glory of Jesus. Um, yeah, Sam, uh, comment here. Strange things. And we'll get into our topic in a, in a second. Uh, we're going to uh, be going through Anand's latest video where, again, Sam, um, he, he kind of only does two things. He repeats stuff he, he got wrong before. And then he does go into 548, which we've been waiting for. We've been waiting That's for right. them to jump on 548. Been salivating. Yeah. Salivating. And we're wondering when they're going to bring it up because it's such a common response. And you, you can, we can only conclude that they can they kind of knew that we'd jump all over it. And so they're holding off as long as they could. But it probably got brought up to, to Adnan. Adnan, why aren't you bringing up 548? Um, and then he went with it. But here you go. Uh, Strange Thing says, David, why all the main miracles of Jesus are hidden? Unlike the Old Testament, where miracles were visible, like Moses talking to God, no one saw God reply to Jesus. So, Sam, were, uh, were, were the main miracles of Jesus all hidden? And yeah. two, um, yeah, strange things. Uh, people obviously aren't going to see God speaking to Jesus. But, uh, Sam, do, do, yeah. do we know that people were well aware and actually yes. witnessed, actually witnessed, God speaking directly to Jesus. Most definitely. I'm just going to give him two of many passages. It's, uh, it's obviously this gentleman is either being influenced by rabbinic Judaism and or he is a rabbinic Jew because this is a typical argument. Whereas God appeared to Moses to 600,000 men and the Egyptians. Whereas who? when did God appear when Jesus ministered? Well, here, let me show you what the apostles themselves proclaimed in Acts 2 verse 22. Just read the gospel accounts. The miracles Jesus did were in full view of the Jews. He didn't do it in, in secret places. So I don't know what this guy's talking about. But here, I'm going to give him just two passages, folks, for the sake of brevity. Two passages of many. Acts 2, verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God, attested to you. And he's talking to the unbelieving Jews on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost. A man attested to you by God with powerful works, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. As you yourselves know, you unbelieving Jews gathered here on Pentecost in Jerusalem, you saw the miracles that Jesus did as a sign that God was working in and through him. Now, I bet you someone's going to use this to refute the deity of Christ, but be that as it may. And he goes in, God never showed himself publicly during Jesus' ministry. Are you sure? John 12, 28 to 30. John 12, 28 to 30. <clears throat> Jesus said, Father, this is now again in Jerusalem in the midst of believers and unbelievers. A crowd was there, and you're going to see it. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. So they thought it was like thunder because it sounded like thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice came not for my sake, but for your sake. So where in the world did you get that Jesus' ministries were hidden and secret, not in full view of the crowds and the multitudes? And that's just two of many passages I can give you. I can give you the miracle of Lazarus, which was done in the midst of a crowd consisting of believers and unbelievers where Jesus shows up. Write John 11, the entire chapter, in fact, but go to John 11, read 23 to 44. And 23 to 44, Jesus comes to Martha as she runs to him. She goes, Lord, had you been here, 
my brother would not have died. But even now, I know God will give you whatever you ask. And then Jesus said, your brother shall rise again. She goes, I know he'll rise on the last day, on the day of resurrection. Jesus answered and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who believes and lives shall never die. Do you believe this? And she answered, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who was to come into the world. Then later on, later on, John 11, 41, 44, Jesus prayed, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but I said this for their sake that they may know you sent me. Now notice what he's, why he's praying. So the crowd there will know Jesus is God's son, authorized by God to speak on God's behalf. And then Lazarus, who was dead for four days, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And immediately he stood alive. And you're telling me Jesus did these miracles in secret? Real quickly, David, this is off topic. Uh -huh. Tatiana made a suggestion because later on, uh, you know, you're going to mention it. She goes, interview, don't convert to Islam. Just real quickly. I would, wouldn't mind interviewing him about Islam, but don't convert to Islam should not be interviewed about Christianity because unfortunately he's a modalist. He denies the Trinity, but he's still on a journey. And mm -hmm. may God open his heart to come to the Trinity. It's not over for him. It doesn't mean he won't get saved. But as long as don't convert to Islam as a modalist, he is not worshiping the true triune God. He's worshiping another God that he thinks is the God of the Bible. So this is why I'd hesitate to ask him anything about Christianity. I just want to be clear for everyone listening. Yeah, and uh, I, Tatiana, I, I don't really have any interest in um, in interviewing him. He's, uh, I mean, notice we, I don't, I don't come out blasting him, uh, but it, guys, you make it awkward when you keep bringing up people that I do not want to talk about because I yes. do not want to say mean things about them. Yes. All right. So you guys keep bringing them up, and then what? What the only way for me to respond to it is to say I do not want to interview this person for the following reasons, and I'm trying not to do that. And even because I just said, even because I just said that, watch the response. Now he'll be posting. You see, this is why I can't stand yeah, Sam Shimon yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, but I was very charitable. You know, I know, I know. You 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 were you were completely you were completely nice. You stated and notice we didn't we didn't come here talking about him. We just someone brought it up, and so yeah, Tatiana. Uh, yeah, we're not uh, not interested. And I, only reason why I wanted to just say it because she's my sister in the Lord Jesus, but she's a Syrian, and I want her to be careful because she's a Trinitarian and she loves yeah. Jesus. So my Syrian sister, you love the Triune God. He doesn't believe the Trinity is biblical. So be careful who you endorse for the glory of the Triune God. And Lord Jesus bless you mm -hmm. and your children. Yeah, and even even I mean even that we'd be, we'd be happy to have a discussion on that topic and yeah, why I, yeah. why and why that is wrong. And Sam would Sam would love to have that discussion with him. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a very weird situation where if you even bring that up as an issue, then he's, you know, he's, he's got a problem with you all of a sudden for thinking that that isn't, that is an issue when that is a very, very important, yes. uh, issue. So, um, check this out, Sam. So searching truth, our Muslim friend <laughs> says, we don't know what that means, but how is that a weakness in our position? <laughs> <laughs> he's going Boy, back to he's that? going back to the Muhammad praise, right? So I said, look, guys, why don't you just admit uh, the Quran says that Allah prays, and you don't know what it means because you, you don't you obviously don't want to think that it means that Allah is talking to someone else or that he's praying to himself. So you just you have no clue what it means. And he says, we don't know what it means, but how is that a weakness in our position? Well, your 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 God claims to be perfectly clear, and you guys claim to be Unitarians, and here your God is saying that he prays, he prays. Right, and you guys constantly blast Christians for believing that that Jesus is the divine Son of God because he prayed, and you say that doesn't make sense when it makes perfect sense according to Christian theology, and yet you keep using that objection when you you a group that's supposed to be Unitarian believe that your God prays according to your Scripture, and you just say, well, we don't know what it means. Or you lie about it and say, oh, that means it means praises, it means uh, blesses, it means all these things that the word doesn't actually mean. All right, but notice, notice Muslims, <laughs> notice everyone is watching. Searching yeah, truth here, just admitted, just admitted. We don't know what, we can't figure out what Allah says. We can't figure out what Allah is saying when he talks about, uh, when he talks about uh, uh, praying. And so if you don't see why that's an issue, searching truth, then you might want to take another look. But All you right, did Sam. get him admit, though. And by the way, here's a compliment that I think this guy is a genius. He said, RSB, 
the the Elijah, I can't pronounce the name. David and Sam, the best show on this side of heaven. Now you know this guy's a genius. Smart. Okay? That is definitely he's smart. Right. He's not he's not far from being the top apologist in the world. Second to you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right. Well, th this this will kind of this is a comment that will kind of lead into it, right? We're trying to transition to the topic we wanted to cover. Muhammad Sheikh says, David Wood, the Quran says, judge by the gospel, not gospels. So this is referring to the Injil because the four gospel were not there yet. They weren't there. They weren't there in the seventh century when we're commanded to judge by the gospel. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Sheikh, yeah. Muhammad Sheikh, you don't believe that the four gospels were around in the seventh century? Sam, last time I checked, we have copies yeah. of the gospel from long before that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, and I saw his comedy trying to say that Jesus preached the gospel, yeah. and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not what he preached. But uh, Muhammad Sheikh, please. And you know what? I do think this man is coming to the faith, and I'll tell you why. Muhammad Sheikh? He, yeah, be, uh, because he, he keeps coming to your channel, mm -hmm. no matter how hard we are with him. And Ruff, he sits there. He was the one that admitted you were right. Mm -hmm. When you confronted him, he goes, "You were right." Remember? Yeah. Uh, you even did a clip. That's him. I agree. So, that is a that is a noble, noble, uh, noble quality. Yeah, no. So that means he's not so militant, but he's. You know what it is, David? Mm -hmm. You know this. When the Muslims try all they can to salvage any remnant of faith they have left, and he's fighting it because this is. It sounds like a man who's on the brink of losing his faith, but he's now making one last effort to try to cling to that little faith left in his heart because mm -hmm. he sees Islam is being wrecked and that Muhammad is being exposed and Jesus is being glorified and he sees how beautiful Jesus is and he can't resist. So he's trying one final shot. I wouldn't be surprised he ends up coming uh, to faith in Jesus Christ. But Muhammad Sheikh, you're not getting the point. In chapter 5, verse 47 of the Quran, Muhammad Sheikh, we are reading it. He's telling you, mm -hmm. Acts 17, read it. Okay, Muhammad Sheikh, please my brother in humanity, and my prayer is you'll be my brother in Jesus Christ sooner than later. We did read chapter 5, verse 47. Muhammad is telling the Christians at his time, Muhammad Sheikh. So you need to answer the question, and guys, make sure he answers the question in mm -hmm. the comment section. Muhammad says to the Christians, let the people of the gospel judge by what God revealed in it. So here's the question for Muhammad Sheikh. How could they judge by the gospel given to Jesus? Because in chapter 5, verse 46, we're told what the gospel is. The gospel given to Jesus that confirmed the Torah between Jesus' hands, the gospel that contains guidance and light. And then it mentions Jesus' gospel as being in the possession of the Christians at Muhammad's time. And the Muhammad says, judge by the gospel. How could they judge by a gospel that didn't exist and what gospel did they have at that time? There is no debate among serious scholars and people who are honest God seekers and lovers of truth. There is no debate that at the time of Muhammad, the Christians only had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as the gospel. As I showed in a previous session, even before Muhammad, and I quoted the late New Testament scholar F.F. F. Bruce, and he acknowledged you find this in the writings of Ignatius. Let me explain who Ignatius is. Ignatius was the bishop of the church in Antioch, Syria. Glory to God, we still have seven of his letters preserved, which you can read in translation online for, uh, for free. On his way to being fed to the lions, on his way to be <clears throat> offered up as a martyr, and willfully, in fact, he even begged the Christians at Rome, do not intercede, intervene for me to stop me from being martyred. He wanted to die as a martyr out of his love for Jesus. What a bold, holy slave. He goes, don't stop me from being flesh for lions as a sacrifice to my God. In those seven letters, as he's writing them on his way to being killed for Jesus, around 107 AD, this man, uh, the bishop of the church in Antioch, Syria, a disciple of the apostles, this man, he mentions Jesus is the eternal God, always existing as God with the Father, and he mentions the Spirit. He was a Trinitarian, affirms Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose immortal to justify us. This man already hints at the fact that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were already called the Gospel. So from that time onward, Christians didn't speak of the Gospels, 
but they spoke of the gospel from four perspectives. Because to them, Matthew wrote, Mark wrote, Luke wrote, John wrote the one gospel of Jesus Christ, the same gospel from four perspectives. So they start referring to the four gospels as the gospel. So there is no doubt historically the only gospel that a Christian would know are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You just can't get around this. Now, if you want me to introduce your own sources to prove this, I can, like Ibn Ishaq. But go ahead, Dave, if you want to say something, go ahead, before I go to Ibn Ishaq. Yeah, I just, and, and I mean, I understand when someone like Muhammad Sheikh, uh, who clearly has not studied this, makes this mistake. When Adnan Rashid, who is supposedly doing all this studying, makes the same blunder, then it becomes inexcusable, right? So when Muslims say, oh, it's not, it doesn't say the four Gospels, it says the Gospel. Guys, from the second century on, the four Gospels were treated as a unit called the, if you were talking about a text, then you're either talking about the entire New Testament or you're talking about the collection at least of the, of the four Gospels. You're not make you're not make you have no clue what you're talking about here guys, exactly. right? It's called the gospel. 2nd century they called the four gospels the gospel. 3rd century they called the four gospels the gospel. 5th century they called the four gospels the gospel. 6th century they called the four gospels the gospel. 7th century they called the four gospels the gospel. Today we just refer to the gospels. We say that. Back then if you were referring to a text it meant the fourfold gospel. The Quran refers to the text that the Christians have and says the gospel and you say, "You see, it can't be referring to the four gospels." That's exactly what every Christian who heard him would think he meant. If you said, "Christians, you're you you've got your gospel," that meant one thing to a Christian. You know, it's so sad, though, what? and our brother Nakdimon is here. God bless you, Nakdimon, a Jewish believer in Jesus and a top-notch apologist. You got searched the truth who just, again, you just, David, you are truly a prophet. Guys, yep. David is more of a prophet than Muhammad because That's true. David said that the Muslims have apostatized and will apostatize because they violate chapter 4, verse 65 of the Quran. They refuse to submit to Muhammad. They could care less what Muhammad says. They explain what Muhammad says away in order to justify their lies. Search the truth, says David. Like the Gnostic Gospel, the real Injil was also lost. The real Injil, so notice. Now, who said this? Uh, search, searching, uh, searching, searching truth. the truth. Oh, yeah. by the way, by the way. So, searching truth said, praise does not mean praise in the sense we do. How difficult is this to understand? But Jesus in the Gospel <laughs> prays like we do. Wait a minute, which Gospel? <laughs> Yeah. Ready? Did you catch that? Praise yeah. does not mean praise in the sense we do. How difficult is this to understand? But Jesus in the gospel prays like we do, right? What gospel are you referring to? Searching truth. You just said Maha you just said Jesus in the gospel prays like we do. Now what do you mean? Well, you of course mean what we mean, the four gospels, the fourfold gospel. So now you're using the term exactly like your God and exactly like your prophet did, but uh, uh Searching truth, we've been through this again and again and again. Jesus most certainly did not pray like you do. He spoke to the Father. He started off his prayer, Father, right? Now, now, now by the way, let, let me just read you what Jesus said. And you tell me if this sounds like you. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father, oops, father, who is in secret, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Now, Sam, do Muslims pray to the Father in secret, or do they love standing in, in their, their mosques and so on to be seen by others? Well, number one, they don't acknowledge their God as a Father. So right there you have a problem. Allah is a Father to no one, and Jesus is not a Son. So the God that Jesus told his followers to pray to is their Father by faith in Jesus, because he's Jesus' is Father. Number two, you'll find Muslims, even outside <clears throat> in the streets, stopping traffic mm -hmm. on their prayer rugs, bent forward with their buttocks facing heaven in order to show people their piety and devotion to the God of Muhammad, who's not the father mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ proclaimed. And you know that, right? You used to see that in New York, right, David? Would you yep. see that where they would come mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. did stop traffic because why? We're holy. And the entire earth belongs to Allah and his messenger. So you, you kufar, shut up, stop traffic because we got to pray 
and put on these long shows that we're pious more than you. Yeah, and uh, and and so look at this, uh, th this this idea of uh, going out and praying in public and being seen by men. And I mean, Muslims are even more extreme with the stopping traffic and blocking streets and stuff with their prayers. Um, and then when he tells his followers how to pray, he says, pray then like this, our Father in heaven. So the first thing he says is a complete refutation of Islam. By the way, little side note, since it's Ramadan, the very next section, and when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You aren't supposed to display your fasting to others. Islam makes it this big, this big yearly event. Everything you guys do completely contradicts Jesus, and you think that he's on your side. But he said right here, um, Searching Truth says, uh, like the Gnostic gospel, the real Injil was also lost. So, Sam, just think about this, right? In the 7th century, Muhammad says Christians have the gospel. Allah says that Christians uh, open the gospel, we read the gospel, and we find Muhammad mentioned in the gospel. Allah commands us to judge by the gospel. And so, Sam, I mean, you just tell me if Allah's yeah, I, um, if Allah is ordering Christians to judge by the gospel, and He says in chapter five, verse sixty-eight, that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the gospel. Does this not assume that Christians in the seventh century still had the gospel, and therefore that searching truth is completely wrong that the gospel was lost? Why do you think I said you're you're a greater prophet than Muhammad? Because mm -hmm. you said. Muslims Apostates. will apostatize, and they will go against Muhammad, breaking Muhammad's commands, showing they are fake Muslims, they are munafik, munafikun. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, it's so, I mean, it's so easy to understand that even my eight-year-old daughter can get it. She can get this. And Muhammad Sheikh, I hope you're listening, because you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. This is going to apply to you. Which part of judge by the gospel wasn't clear. Muhammad is talking to the Christians mm -hmm. of his day. David just mentioned chapter 5 or 68. It's also 566. 566, 568, 547. The gospel is with them. Judge by the gospel that's with you. And if you don't live up to the Torah and the gospel and all the revelation that, there, that has come down to you from your Lord, then you are losers. But if you do follow the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that's come from your Lord, then you're going to be the winners, the victors, if you do so. Mm -hmm. But according to what you guys are saying, guys, listen, you don't understand. You're just proving Muhammad is a liar or he's an ignoramus. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Muhammad says that the Christians of his day, and I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, it sinks in. They could judge by the gospel. They did have the gospel. And if you want to add another verse, chapter 7, verse 157, it says that they're going to find a prophecy of the Ummi Nabi, the unlettered prophet that is found, written in the Torah and the gospel that's with them. Torah, gospel, with them mm -hmm. at the time of Muhammad. With them. What more do you need for the Quran to convince you guys that Muhammad believed the gospel of Jesus Christ was preserved and in the possession of the Christians of his time and they had to live up to it, follow it, and judge by it. But if you're right, because Muhammad Sheikh keeps saying, oh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John can't be the gospel because it says Jesus preached the gospel. Now notice the problem here. Yeah. If Muhammad Sheikh, you're right, that because Jesus preached the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John can't be that gospel, do you understand that means Muhammad didn't know what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. Muhammad Sheikh, listen, because Muhammad believed the written gospel they had is the gospel of Jesus preserved in what they had in their writing. Mm -hmm. But according to you, the written gospels is not the gospel of Jesus, means Muhammad didn't know what he's talking about. He's an ignoramus. You're smarter than him. And therefore, you just argued yourself out of Islam. Why are you a Muslim? But then more importantly, look at the irony, folks. He doesn't believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the gospel, and therefore they're not reliable. But they're reliable enough to tell him Jesus preached the gospel. That part he'll trust. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yep. The part where it says he preached the gospel, we accept that. But we won't accept that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the inspired record of what Jesus preached, mm -hmm. the gospel. 
Yeah, so uh, and let, let me just go ahead and quote Jummy at Termini 2653. Muhammad said, the Torah and the gospel are with the Jews and the Christians. The Torah and the gospel are with the Jews and the Christians. Our friend Searching Truth says that Muhammad's a liar. He, Muhammad's just too stupid. He doesn't realize yeah. that the Torah and the gospel were lost. So think about this is why, the, Searching Truth, this is why we're calling you apostates. Your God says we still have the gospel. You say we don't have the gospel. Your prophet says we have the gospel. You say we don't. So you're calling your God and your prophet liars, right? Yeah. So so what what do we have from searching truth here already? Um, Allah's a liar, Muhammad's a liar, and Allah prays, but we don't know what it means when Allah prays. So this is this is the wisdom. <laughs> this is the wisdom of Islam that's been shared. And guys, all we sat down to do was to watch some clips of Anan Rashid and go through them. And this is what Muslims keep doing to themselves. Allah's a liar. Muhammad's a liar. Um, and uh, and Allah prays, but we don't know what it means. And by the way, just to show you how evil the spirit that possessed Muhammad is, I don't know who he's talking about. Ever content said, your kid died because of your defending the Christianity. Okay. I don't know of any of our kids that died. God forbid, may the Lord preserve them. But you What's see that? the spirit of Yeah, this guy right that? here. Who said now, that? Here, let me show you. Ever, ev, Evie, he can't even spell his name. Evie content. Your kid died because of your defending the Christianity. He can't even spell English. Your kid died because of your defending Christianity. Which kid? You have a yeah, kid that died? Really no. May the Lord Jesus preserve our children for his glory. So, no, I don't know what the heck he's talking about, but what relevance does that have? Um, to I mean, two, two of my sons have a what's considered a terminal illness. They weren't expected to live past the age of one. Um, that was many, many years ago. They're still alive. But uh, probability-wise, they it is a terminal illness. It does catch up with you eventually. But why in the name of common sense would you say, it's because right. I'm defending Christianity? If you want to say it's defend, I'm, it's because I'm defending Christianity, then what would you say about Muhammad's sons who That's died? Exactly Exactly right, 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 right. It's because it's because sense. he defended Islam, right? It's because he defended Islam, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. So should we go ahead and jump into some clips now, Sam? Get get two things. Well, definitely get ready. How Muhammad criticized the pagan gods of the Meccans. You I already that? have it here. I have what uh, what Abu Bakr said. I even have Muhammad cursing his companions and an orphan go girl with early death and making her cry. All right, because our good friend, <laughs> what is this searching truth now says, why are you misrepresenting me? I clarified what I meant. You, you, well, you admitted that Allah prays. You just said you don't know what it means. And you said that the, to the the gospel was lost when your God says it wasn't lost and your prophet says it wasn't lost. And so you contradict your God and your prophet. Now, all we do is point out the obvious. Your, your God is obviously all-knowing. So if he says we still have it and you say we don't, then either you're wrong or he's wrong. And if he's wrong, he knows the truth. He knows the truth because he's all knowing. You could be you could be wrong out of ignorance. But if your God says something that's wrong, then he has to be lying, which wouldn't be surprising because he brags about being the best of all deceivers. So I assume you're not telling us that you're wrong. So you must be telling us that your God is wrong. Well, great. You're telling us your God is wrong, your prophet's wrong. So oh. great. We won't listen to your God and we won't listen to your prophet. What's that? David, no, it's gonna get better. He just buried his his prophet he said the Injil was lost after the seventh century after muhammad it was lost so so let me get this straight sam christians had the Injil in the first century and yes. in the second century and in the third century and in the fourth century and in the fifth century and in the sixth century and in the seventh century so from the first century yes. all the way to the seventh century and all over the place so that it was even available in arabia there was this gospel it was everywhere and then somehow muhammad comes along and it miraculously disappears from everywhere on the entire planet to such an extent that we we have no reference to the injil that yeah, muslims right. talk about we have no reference to it anywhere it's never mentioned anywhere on the planet that's the position right that's yeah. tell us that's your position wow tell us that's your position muslim 
For, wow. it, it, the gospel lasted from the first century to the seventh century, which means now keep in which means that Christians were copying it. They were passing it on. They're making copy after copy after copy after copy after copy after copy, so that it lasted from the first century all the way into the seventh. And then in the seventh century, it it miraculously disappeared from everywhere on the planet. That's your position, right? Tell us that's your position, uh, so we can laugh you, so we can laugh you out of the chat. <laughs> can I ask the Muslims to do some folks, Muslims? I don't know if you're doing this deliberately. Could you let us go through Adnan Rashid's points to refute them by the grace yeah, of Jesus? Yeah, it's, it's it, isn't it absolutely amazing, right? I mean, think about this, Sam. We actually play all of Adnan's arguments. I mean, think about this. A lot of the people here, most of the people here don't watch Adnan Rashid. So Muslims, if they really think Adnan's got some solid arguments and some solid points, they should be extremely excited. Wow! Now all these Christians are going to hear Adnan's brilliant arguments. But the second we say we're going to play Adnan's clips, they try to distract us. It's almost like they don't believe in what they're saying. And they don't 100%. believe in their own apologists. 100%, yep. We ready? Let's see if we can go through this by the grace of God. All right. And then we'll take questions later. Let's go. All right, now, Sam, on this first one, yeah. on this first one, it's just uh, it's a little disclaimer at the beginning of the video. So I'm just going to uh, start it, and I'm going to... mute us okay i've unmuted us all right so we have this uh caveat up on the screen you it's you're on a little bit of the delay so you should see it here uh sure. shortly sure. it says all information on the scriptures of the jews and christians found in the islamic sources must be understood in light of the evidence presented in this video Verses quoted in isolation with twisted spins superimposed upon them by missionaries should be ignored. Why would they want us to be ignored? Every time the words Torah and Gospel are mentioned in the Islamic literature, they mean either the original revelations of Moses and Jesus or their remnants in what the Jews and Christians have possessed as Scripture. The Torah and the Gospel never mean the Pentateuch or the New Testament. So, ladies and gentlemen, he has to put this up at the beginning. Why? All, to this day, all he has to do is show us one verse of the Quran saying that the gospel has been corrupted. He never does. Never does. Never even comes close. Um, but notice this part. Every time the words Torah and gospel are mentioned in the Islamic literature, they mean either the original revelation of Moses and Jesus or their remnants. This is going to be a big issue for Adnan. He's going to say that when the Quran is, is affirming what is in our possession, what we have, saying that we read it and so on, it's affirming the remnants. Yeah. Now, we have to wonder, we have to wonder why Allah didn't just say that he's affirming our remnants. Could have saved his followers yeah. a lot of problems right now. Yeah. We also yeah. have to wonder, we also have to wonder why Allah specifically says not to just go with parts, right? Surah 2, verse 85 of the Quran, Allah condemns Jews who were going, who were just believing in parts of their scripture and throwing out other parts. But Anan tells, tells the Jews that's what Allah is ordering them to do. He's ordering you to only believe in parts and to reject other parts when that's the exact opposite of what Allah says. We can only conclude that according to Anan Rashid, Allah's a liar, Muhammad's a liar, because Muhammad's, yes. Muhammad says we have the Torah and the gospel. He doesn't say you have remnants of the Torah and the gospel. I would never in my life, I would never in my life, and Sam, you can confirm this. I'll go ahead and take this down. You've seen it, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and when you're done, I want to show what even Muslims that agree with us, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah um, just just think about this, right? We, we've said this before, but we believe that the Quran has remnants of truth <laughs> in it, right? Yep. Okay, so we believe that the Quran has remnants of truth. <laughs> Would we ever, therefore, say, would we ever point to, a, point to a Quran? Here, let me do it. Would we ever, since we believe that the Quran has remnants in it, would we ever say, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you? Because, be there's, rem, because there's remnants in it? Because there's remnants, even though everything is corrupted, everything else is corrupted, and even though it's filled with deception, 
would we say, since we believed in, in little part? I mean, Sam, it's it's almost impossible to even find a book anywhere in the world where I wouldn't say, yeah, that's got some remnants of truth in it. Be almost impossible. There, you don't then say, oh, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. You don't point to it as a revelation of God, right? But notice, so Muslims, we just want to be clear here, right? We believe that there are remnants of truth in this book, right? We base what you guys claim to believe about our New Testament that yes, there was an original scripture and then, you know, it got corrupted and 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 so on. That's precisely what we believe about your book. Your book is the corruption of the Torah and the gospel. This is the corruption Right? Your book is the corruption of it, right? The difference exactly. is your book says that our books have not been corrupted, right? But we believe that your book is corrupted, which is precisely why we would never tell you to judge by this book, right? We will, we, will we will only tell you in the sense that you're contradicting yourself if you're going against this book and we draw your attention to that to lead you out of it. But we would never say you have no you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon this revelation. You, you of course you should not be standing upon this as your revelation. You need to get off of this, right? We would never we would never in a million years say that you have the revelation from God here. We would never say that we confirm what you have. We would never do that. We draw attention to what your book says about our book to point you to to lead you to the contradiction that is at the heart of your book so that you stop believing in it, right? But the author of the Quran keeps saying that he affirms our scriptures. And what do, what do your apologists say? Oh, he's just talking about remnants in it. Okay, so we've got a book. It's got some remnants, but a ton of falsehood in it. And your God says, yeah, that's the book. That's the book you have to go with. That's the gospel. And you don't realize what apostates you, you are. You don't 100%. believe what your God says. You don't believe what your prophets say. You don't believe what your book says. And you call yourselves Muslims who submit to Allah and Muhammad. Yep. Bad yep, idea. Yep, yep. By the way, <clears throat> notice his arguments get worse and worse and more desperate with each succeeding yep. response because it's obvious he's, again, and I said this and I'm going to say it again, he's doling out meat to the Muslims in order to keep them brainwashed and inoculate them from hearing the evidence that simply decimates, obliterates his objections because he has nothing to stand on. He's perverting the Quran mm -hmm. to his shame and humiliation and will help him mm -hmm. in humiliating himself by the grace of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you guys remember in one of the first sessions that we did, and I said I had an article where I quote Muslims, I quote Muslims in their translations of the Quran, and you need to find it on Answering Islam blog, answering Islam blog .wordpress com because I can't put the URL in the comment section, but maybe Lord willing later David can uh, do it in the description box. Guys, I'm just going to read what the Muslims say because it's common sense. Number one, notice that in the disclaimer he said that it's referring either to the Torah given to Moses or remnants of that in the scriptures of the Jews and Christians. Now David already refuted that assertion. But I guess Adnan is not really paying attention to our objections because my challenge to the Muslims was simply this. Let me repeat my challenge. And there are Muslims here, and you can go back to Adnan and say, make a video, answer his challenge. He said the Torah was given to Moses. My challenge to you Muslims, here's my challenge. Show me a single verse in the Quran where it says the Torah was given to, Muslim, uh, to Moses. I'm sorry. Show me a single place in the Quran where it says the Torah was given to Moses. You won't find it. It's not there. Where did Adnan get that the Torah was given to Moses? He didn't get it from the Quran. He either got it from later traditions, which got that from the Jews and Christians, or he got it from the Bible. But this is where Adnan buries himself. You can't appeal to the Jews and Christians to know what the Torah is and then reject their claim of what that Torah is because the Jews and Christians, for them, the Torah was the Pentateuch. There was no other Torah given to Moses that the Jews and Christians held in their possession at the time of Muhammad. The only Torah that they would have had in their possession, Jews and Christians, even during the time of Christ, is what he now says is the Pentateuch, which isn't the Torah, but only contains remnants of that. Because don't forget, folks, the point we've been making, and we're going to sound like a broken record, because I want this to be second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit so you can use it to silence these lies. It's not just Muhammad saying that he confirms the Torah and the possession of the Jews and Christians of his time. Let me give you these verses again. And in the article, I provide Ibn Kathir's exegesis of these passages. I want you to note down 
Chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 48. Chapter 3, verse 48. Chapter 3, verse 50. Chapter 3, 48. Chapter 3, verse 50. Chapter 5, verse 46. Chapter 5, verse 46. And chapter 61, verse 6. What are you going to find there? You're going to find the Quran saying that Allah personally taught Jesus the Torah, the Gospel, the Book, and Wisdom, Hikmah. And then the Quran has Jesus confirming the Torah between his hands. Musaddiqan lima baina yadehi, literally, the Torah which was between his hands that he read, that he touched, that he had access to. Ibn Kathir, in his exposition of those passages, states, folks, please listen, because Ibn Kathir is considered one of the greatest medieval Muslim commentators of the Quran. He says that Jesus confirmed as true, as reliable, not only parts of it, as true and reliable, the Torah that he had access to and he read. What else do you need the Quran to say in order for the Muslims to stop lying and twisting the Quran, but admit that the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, is the only Torah that the Quran is acknowledging, because what Torah did Jesus acknowledge? The Old Testament today, the Pentateuch today. How do we know? Because even in the New Testament, in the Gospels, Jesus and his inspired emissaries quote the Torah that we have today, the first five books, the Pentateuch, and not only that, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls, copies of the Old Testament books written 200 to 100 years before Jesus, which are virtually identical to what we have today, tell us that the only Torah that Jesus had, the only Torah that Jesus confirmed, the only Torah that Jesus upheld as the uncorrupt Word of God is your Pentateuch, the five books of the Old Testament and the Old Testament as a whole. So Adnan, give it up, man. Give it up. Mm -hmm. If your Quran is speaking truthfully, that Jesus confirmed the Torah in his day, and Muhammad confirmed the Torah in his day, this is simply a fact of archaeology, fact of history, fact of the textual tradition, and he even conceded that fact indirectly when he mentioned the Pentateuch. There was mm -hmm. no other Torah yeah. that the Jews had besides the Pentateuch, which they believe came from Moses by inspiration, which Jesus confirmed and had access to in Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Now, I can give you what the Muslims say, how they translate the term, but I think we've sufficiently established, give it up, Adnan, you've lost, and you've lost badly, repent, and turn to Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. Check out, uh, Muhammad Maya said, uh, I am an Arab Christian, until this day we refer to the four Gospels on Anjil as the Gospel. In jail, okay. he's saying that Christ Arab Christians refer to the four Gospels as the Gospel. And by the way, David, to add another line of evidence, mm -hmm. we didn't mention it because there is evidence suggesting that at least in the 400s, the Syriac speaking churches, my ancestors, <clears throat> started <clears throat> translating the four Gospels into Syriac. But you know this and I know this. And this is why, one of the reasons why I didn't mention it because I don't know if it was in use by the Arabic speaking Christians at the time of Muhammad or the Syriac speaking Christians in New Arabic. But you and I know about the Diatessaran. Now let me, for the people who don't know what the diatessaran is, dia tessaran means through four, through four. In the second century, and Assyrians, you're going to love this. If you're a Assyrian Christian, Tatiana, everyone, you're going to love this. In the second century, around 170 AD, an Assyrian Christian who was a disciple of Justin Martyr named Tashian took the four Gospels and made a harmony of the four Gospels. He took the four Gospels, combined them together in one continuous narrative. So instead of four Gospels, he combined the four Gospels together in one, translated in Syriac, and that was the Gospel that Syriac Christians were reading until around 400 approximately, they decided to translate the four Gospels directly into Syriac. What am I getting at? The diatessaran was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John combined together as one continuous narrative, which Tashin translated in Assyrian. So in reality, it was the gospel. The four gospels combined into one. That was the gospel for Syriac-speaking Christians until eventually they simply just went with the four gospels. Now, if there is evidence that at the time of Muhammad, you still had Christians going by the diatessaran, because we do find copies of it that are way late in the medieval period. 
then it would make sense that Muhammad would be referring to the diatessaron as the gospel because the diatessaron is the four gospels in one. So it's still Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John combined in one and called the gospel. So either way, Muslims give up the shenanigan. There is no other gospel that the Christians had except the fourfold gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no other Torah that the Jews and Christians had, which Jesus confirmed, which Muhammad confirmed in the possession of the Jews and Christians of his day, other than the Pentateuch. Give up, game over, mm -hmm. Muhammad loses, Jesus always wins. All right, now, Sam, um, you said you've got the, the passages pulled up. See, there, there's, a re there's a reason I want you to have the, uh, the passages ready on this one. Um, sometimes I like, you know, sometimes we'll do a two-hour live stream. And by the way, I have to be done uh, within two hours on this one because uh, my wife has to, my wife's doing an online conference. So, uh, but maybe, maybe since we're covering the same topic, maybe we'll go, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow, but maybe we'll go live Conference. at the same time tomorrow to yeah, to, to wrap this one up. But uh, sometimes, you know, since we have a two or three or sometimes four hour live stream, sometimes there are clips that I want that can actually serve as separate videos. And two that are coming up, I want these definitely as separate videos. And those of you who are out there who want to use these as separate videos. So uh, one of the topics, Sam, you've already, you've got the passages ready on Muhammad mocking the beliefs of the pagans oh, because man, Adnan happen? is about to start whining about that, that we make fun of his religion and he would never, Muslims would never do that and his sources are filled with his own <laughs> prophet doing it. So one, we want, yeah. we want, we want that hilarious topic covered. Um, but the other one is Adnan is about to start mocking Christians, mocking us for pointing to his book to affirm our book. And he says, if you ask me why I should, why you should believe in my book, it would never tell, I would never tell you because your book, when that's exactly what his God did. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Sam? His and God. David, that's a lie too. You know that, right? Because well, when, if you, why are you then debating Muhammad prophesied in the Bible if you're not appealing he even, to my he even, Bible? He, yeah. he even, he even includes that in there. But I mean, it, I mean, it's just such a common, a common claim in the Quran, why don't you believe in my revelation when I'm affirming your revelation? Yes. I'm affirming your revelation. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm affirming your book. Your book talks about me. And so what his God does over and over, Jews and Christians, you need to believe in this book because I'm saying something about your book. Adnan says you should never do that. And so he completely contradicts his own God. And then later he goes on to argue that Muhammad's prophesied in the Bible in the same exact video, and he does Thanks. not see it, right? Ladies Isn't and gentlemen, amazing? yeah, that's guys. Just so you know, that's what that's that's the real purpose here. Uh, Nan is still watching it, saying, is, and saying, uh, oh, they're trying to to use our book to affirm their book. No, we're trying to use your book to completely destroy your own book because your book self destructs mm -hmm. once you realize what your book says. We're doing this so that you your eyes are open to the the silliness of Islam. So Sam, we need the passages on. The Quran appealing to our book and saying that oh, he yeah. affirms our scriptures and therefore we should be affirming him. So we need to recognize. I got it all. Okay. All so these are going to be two awesome separate videos. Now, Sam, since I want you to hear what he says, guys, everyone pay attention. Um, and this is my first time hearing it. I haven't heard him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Sam is listening to the live stream, which is on a 20 to 30 second delay, right? There is apparently a way I can... He can hear the clips through there. We were trying. That's that was the technical difficulties. We were trying to figure that out before uh, and and couldn't figure it out. So Sam's going to listen on a delay. So once the clip is finished, I'm just going to stop until Sam is able to listen to it on a delay, uh, and then he can tell us once the clip is finished, right? Because later when I post them as separate videos, I can just cut out that extra space and have a nice video. But I want him to hear everything Adnan says on these issues so that he can see how bad this is and we can respond to it. All right, so Sam? Yes. We want to keep these. We want to uh, we want to get all that information out there, but we also want to keep it as short as possible cuz these are okay. these are going to be separate videos, not just uh, not just live stream elements. All right. Um, I'm all not right. sure I'm not sure if he does it if he breaks it down in this first clip, but we're going to go ahead and check out this first clip. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to check out Adnan Rashid Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Adnan Rashid, your brother, back with another video on the topic of the Quran. 
does the Quran endorse the Bible is the question I'm going to address today. And hopefully I will be going through some points to clarify this particular question. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? Firstly, let me highlight as to why the Christian missionaries have lately used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine if someone came to me and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not. Do you expect me to say the Bible is corrupt or the Bible confirms the Quran? Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran. Therefore, the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No. I would pick up works of scholars and I would explain as to why the Quran is not corrupt. And that question will be addressed in another video, hopefully in the future. So that line of defense to use the Quran to defend the Bible is not working on Christians and Muslims. All right, we're going to let Sam finish that clip. I pretty much get it, right? All right, you got it, right? Yeah, my guy this point when oh, first you're, you're supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to no, 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 I mean once the clip finishes, then let me know so I know when to uh yeah, it's I know done. when to stop. Yeah. 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 All right, Sam. Okay. Notice what Adnan just said. <laughs> yeah. If you ask me whether my book's for, my, whether my book is corrupt, I wouldn't start talking about your book and your revelations, I would only talk about my book and what scholars say about my book. That's the only defense I would give about my book. I wouldn't sit there and say, oh, but your book says this or your book yeah. says that. Now, Sam, yes, I, I don't know which Quran he's reading, 100%. but when people start, when, when the Jews and Christians kept telling Muhammad, why should we believe in you? Why should we believe in you? Why should we believe in your revelations? Didn't he always <laughs> start going to our books, the That's books right. of the Jews and the books of the Christians, saying that he's confirming our books and therefore we're supposed to confirm his book in return and that our books prophesy him and talk about his revelations? Isn't that what they say? Yes, it's an embarrassment that a Muslim like Adnan would want us to steer away from what his prophet said and appeal to scholars because folks understand what Adnan did. He's putting the views of scholars above his own prophet, meaning scholars carry more weight and have more authority than his prophet. He just argued himself outside of Islam because he condemned Muhammad as being less reliable and authoritative than uninspired, fallible human scholars but that's okay because we do agree with him Muhammad is a false prophet but for other reasons but now according to his criterion Muhammad did the very thing that he shouldn't have done if Muhammad were to apply the standards of Adnan that he's imposing on us where does the Quran say that Muhammad appealed to the scriptures of the Jews and Christians to confirm that he and his book are from the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because we're making a clip out of this. I'm going to read it. I'm going to start at chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. So by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm just going to read. I'll let Muhammad silence Adnan and Muslims and put them in their place. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. <clears throat> Children of Israel, remember my blessing wherewith I blessed you. And fulfill my covenant, and I shall fulfill your covenant, and have awe of me, and believe in that I have sent down, and here's the reason why, confirming that which is with you. He's talking to his contemporaries. What you have, my book confirms it, so believe in me. And be not the first to disbelieve in it. Sell not my signs for a little price, and fear you me. Do not confound truth with vanity falsehood, and do not conceal the truth wittingly. Side loan. You can't conceal something you don't have. This assumes they have the truth, but they're trying to hide it. Continuing, and do not confound the truth with vanity, and do not conceal the truth wittingly, and perform the prayer, and pay the alms, and bow with those that bow. Will you bid others to piety, and forget yourselves while you read the book? Not parts that are intact and other parts corrupted. You read the book, which the Quran confirms. Do you not understand? Another one, <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 89 and 91. Chapter 2, verse 89 and 91. And they say, our hearts are uncircumcised. Nay, but Allah or God has cursed them for their unbelief. Little 
will they believe? When there came to them a book from God, Allah, meaning the Quran, confirming what is with them, what you have right now, and they aphortimes prayed for victory over the unbelievers. When there came to them that they recognized, they disbelieved in it. And the curse of Allah is on the unbelievers. And when they were told, believe in what Allah has sent down, meaning the Quran, believe in it. They said, we believe in what was sent down on us. And they disbelieve in what is beyond that, yet it is the truth confirming what is with them. In other words, what's wrong with you? My Quran is saying your book is true. It's confirming it. It's absolutely the pure words of God. That should give you a reason to trust me in my book. Chapter 2, verse 101. When there has come to them a messenger from God confirming what is with them, a party of them that were given the book reject the book behind their backs as though they knew it not. That's chapter 2, verse 101. Chapter 2, verse 121. Those to whom we have given the book and read it with the true reading. You can't read a book with the true reading if your book is corrupt, Adnan. They believe in it, and whoso disbelieves in it, they shall be the losers. Chapter 4, verse 47. Chapter 4, verse 47. You who have been given the book, believe in what we have sent down, confirming what is with you. Let me repeat it again. You who have been given the book, meaning Jews and Christians. In the immediate context, it's the Jews. Believe in what has been sent down, meaning the Quran, confirming what is with you. And by the way, don't take my word for it. Go to any Arab lexicon and ask an Arabic speaker. What does sadaqa mean? Sadaqa <clears throat> means to confirm something as true, as reliable, as completely trustworthy. So what the Quran is saying is, the Quran confirms your book as being completely true, reliable, not a hint of anything corrupt in it. Now, David, I can read more, or do you want me to stop there? Uh, that, that, that's, I, I think that's enough because we'll be, we'll be going into more passages. But notice, Jews and Christians, you need to believe in my book because my book is confirming your book. And if you look at, you know, the claims about, you know, Surah 7 verse 157, that our book actually contains prophecies about Muhammad and so on, it's always, hey, I'm confirming the scriptures that you have and your scriptures talk about me. But that is exactly the approach Anand says it's ridiculous and absurd to take. He says, whatever you do, whatever you do, Never never point to another book as confirmation of your book, because that would be silly and absurd. Instead, you need to go to what scholars say and look at what they said, but never point to the other book as confirmation of your own book. What does his God do? What does his prophet do? Do they go to the, do they go to the scholars? Do they go to, the, do they go to the Bart Ehrman and so on? Of course not. He says, your book says, and so Anan, once again, has condemned his own God, has condemned his own prophet. He has apostatized, and you wonder why. And ladies and gentlemen, it's because his religion forces him to do this. If there was a way out of this, he would simply give the way out. He would simply say, no, our book doesn't affirm your book. This is a lie. Here are all the verses that show that your scriptures have been corrupted and our, our book doesn't affirm your scriptures. He wouldn't sit here whining that we do what his God does, namely say, hey, stop objecting to my book right. because your book says it. The only difference is we're doing it for an entirely different reason. Allah in the Quran is affirming the inspiration and preservation and authority of our books because he's claiming that he is confirming and that he revealed the books that we have with us. That's the point we're drawing to show that he actually destroyed his own religion. The way we're using it is to uncover this complete contradiction that is at the core of Islam and that is responsible for some very strange behavior that Muslims just cannot spot. They do not understand that it's a problem to run around saying, your book's corrupt, your book's corrupt, your book's, your book's corrupt, your book affirms my prophet, your book affirms my prophet, your book affirms my prophet. They do not understand how insane this sounds, right? They do not understand how insane it sounds to be saying that our books are corrupt and untrustworthy while simultaneously appealing to our books to confirm their own prophet and then telling us to believe in their revelation, a revelation which confirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures, scriptures that completely contradict their own revelations, right? They do not see the insanity of this. Why? Because their God and their prophet had absolutely no 
clue what they were talking about. That's the point we're trying to draw. And no amount of whining and contradicting your own God and your own prophet, Adnan, is going to stop us. Amen. All right, that's a video right there. See that? that that's a separate video. Yes, sir. All right. So that's why I'm trying to be very cover as much and be succinct because we want these videos to go out. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, now Sam, now we need to do it again. Uh, I'm not, I'm not positive that it's this next clip, but it's either this clip or the clip after that. But now he's gonna go. <laughs> now he's gonna start whining <laughs> that we make fun of his prophet and how this is a horrible idea and how no one. No one who is actually trying to reach people should ever make fun of someone else's beliefs. And boy, are we going to have some fun with that. But that's going to be its own nice little video. I don't even know what to call these. It's going to be like, you know, Adnan Rashid keeps destroying his God over and over and over again because he just, he just keeps wrecking Allah and Muhammad and not even realizing it. How, and why doesn't he realize it? Because Islam is just grounded upon these hypocrisies and, uh, and double standards. We bring them to the surface. I did want to address uh, one comment real quick. Uh, Darth Vega says, Hi, David and Sam. Love what you guys do. I was wondering where the phrase, surprise, David, David. comes from. I must have missed that reference. That, uh, yeah, uh, Darth Vega, that, that actually comes from a video by Mufasal uh, Islam, who I, I, I had issued a challenge. I issued a challenge. I said I would convert to Islam if Muslims can show one unequivocal verse from the Quran where Allah says that the gospel has been corrupted. And Mufassal Islam comes on in his video and he admits that the verses that Muslims use to show that the Bible's been corrupted don't actually even refer to the gospel. So he admits that. He admits I'm right. And then he goes, but surprise, David, surprise. And he says he's got this other argument, which is basically that the Quran contradicts the Bible, uh, and <laughs> which we, we all know, right? And Adnan does the same thing. Surah 4, verse 157, contradicts the Bible, and therefore is saying that the Bible's corrupt. No, the Quran says that the Bible is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God and contradicts, and the Quran contradicts the Bible. Two statements, right? So, um, all right, are we ready to go on? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> so this will be the same idea, ladies and gentlemen, um, for purposes of a later, uh, of, of uh, putting this into a separate video later. Once we finish the clip, I'm going to sit and wait until Sam finishes watching because I can edit that out later. All right, are you ready, Sam? Yeah, go ahead. Get go ready for start. Adnan to refute you again and school to me, expose son. you. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me. Once again, I give you Adnan Rashid. Lately, Christian missionaries have been using the Quran to defend the Bible. Now, it is clear that the Bible is corrupt. All scholars of textual studies, those who have studied the text of the New Testament as well as the Old Testament, have confirmed that the Bible is corrupt beyond repair. We do not know what the original authors once upon a time wrote. We have no idea as to what Matthew, Mark, Luke and John might have written originally, let alone what God might have inspired if he ever inspired them. So... This line of defense is not working. So nowadays, Christian missionaries, when it comes to that question, whether the Bible is corrupt or not, they go straight to the Quran and they say, no, the Quran confirms the Bible, so the Bible cannot be corrupt. This line of defense is not working. And why are they using this reasoning? This reasoning is being used to simply deceive people, to simply give this impression that somehow the Muslims cannot believe in this. But the Quran is very categorical on that question that the Bible is corrupt. The current Bible in the hands of the Christians and the Jewish people is not pure. These are not the words of God revealed to Moses and Jesus. The Quran is very clear and categorical on that. And there are some set of verses which I will be putting in front of you in this regard. All right, that actually wasn't the clip where he uh, and I think it's next. It might, it might, it might actually be the one after that. But this is the one I want to get to. So in this clip, he just said, uh, uh, "Scholars know that the Bible's been corrupt, that the gospel's been corrupt." <clears throat> he ignores once again the fact that he's equivocating. Right? It's a fallacy, fallacy of equivocation. But ladies and gentlemen, equivocation is where you say you you, you make a statement. And then you use the word differently. You change the meaning of the word to try and prove something. It would be like yeah. me saying, 
In the United States, so so since Adnan is about to complain that we make fun of Muhammad, notice, what, watch what I do here. Ladies and gentlemen, in the United States of America, because of freedom of speech, I have a right to make fun of Muhammad. Therefore, therefore I will make fun of Muhammad because we should always do what's right. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. I have a right to make fun of Muhammad, and therefore I will make fun of Muhammad because we should always do what's right. Notice, the word right there means two different things, right? You can't say, oh, because right over here, it's, I, I said right, therefore I mean it in this other sense. I, the same word, two different meanings. Yeah. Well, yeah. when New Testament textual critics talk about the corruption of the text, they do not mean what Muslims mean. In fact, by their standards, the Quran has been corrupted, right? If yeah, they're, if they're, if they're, yeah, if they're talking, if they're talking about, uh, if they're talking about, hey, there are two verses here, there are two verses here, and there's a different word that's used or a different spelling, even if it's something that does not affect the meaning of the text at all, if they if they do not know positively which one goes back to the original, they call that a corruption, right? These same scholars will say that the Bible is the best preserved book of the ancient world. They'll they'll say that. Bart Ehrman would say that. Bart Ehrman does say that, right? Yes. They do not mean the same thing that Muslims mean by corruption. What do Muslims need for their position to be true? They need massive corruption of all the fundamental basic doctrines of Christianity. That's precisely what you never find anywhere. And therefore, it's insane and hypocritical for Muslims to keep pointing to scholars who would say that the Muslim position is completely wrong. Bart Ehrman would say that the Islamic position, that, that all these yes. doctrines have been corrupted, and that there was originally a book revealed by, revealed by Jesus, and Jesus walk around with this book, and then it's later corrupted into the Gospels and so on. Bart Ehrman would say that is the most ridiculous position on, in, in the history of forever. And yet Muslims will look, oh, but Bart Ehrman, he said corruption. Yeah, he does not mean what you do. Stop lying about him. But they won't, but they won't stop. All right, Sam. So let, anything let you want to add? Just one final point. Folks. This guy doesn't want to get it, and it's not that he's dumb. He just is being deceitful, dishonest, and wicked. Folks, if the scholars that he cites, and he actually misquotes and misinterprets, taking their words out of context, what they mean by corruption, but let's, for argument's sake, and Christians, I want you to understand what the point is, what David's point is. If these scholars are right, the Bible has been corrupted irreparably beyond restoration, which is not what they say, so he's lying through his mm -hmm. teeth, but I'll grant that. Don't you understand this means Muhammad is a liar, a fraud, or an ignoramus and can't be from God? Because how many times must we quote uh -huh. the Quran and the Hadith? Muhammad over and over again says, not some <clears throat> scriptures that don't exist, some magical scriptures on some magical mountain out there, maybe in one of the seven heavens, which Muhammad may have seen during his fan fantastical miraj. The scriptures of the Jews and Christians in his day, the scriptures in the day of Jesus, are the uncorrupt, pure revelations of God. God has preserved them. They're not corrupt. They can't be corrupted. But I'm going to agree with Adnan in his misrepresentation of the scholars and say, no, those scriptures have been corrupted beyond restoration. Adnan, you just condemned Muhammad as a fraud and the Quran as a fraud, and you prove that God did not speak to Muhammad. Because if you're right, the scriptures have been corrupted beyond restoration, then you prove Muhammad doesn't know what he's talking about. Because Muhammad did not share your view. He did not share the view of the scholars. He thought the Bible, which existed in his day, is the uncorrupt word of God. But if you're right, Muhammad is wrong. Why are you a Muslim? Because you're dishonest. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You just destroyed Muhammad and buried him and the Quran. Thank you, Adnan. That was David Wood's entire point. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, uh, two comments here. One, Searching Truth has said, I agree that Bible scholars don't mean corruption in the way Adnan uses it. Good. Pretty good, right? So good. Searching Truth here right. admits that Bible scholars are using the term differently from the way Adnan uses the term right yeah. so that so that there there were we seem to be in agreement that he's using an equivocation and this is very standard practice to talk about textual variants and so on as corruption of the text but then but then to suggest that it somehow supports islam when it doesn't the entire manuscript tradition of the bible yeah. is one massive refutation 
of the Islamic position. Yeah, and, and Dave, I just want to say, it's like Adnan wishes he was an agnostic atheist, so he didn't have to defend the fraud yeah. called Muhammad. And it's ironic, David, you said later on the video, the same Adnan who said that the Bible's been corrupted beyond restoration, is still authoritative enough for him to appeal to prove that Muhammad is prophesied in that Bible that's corrupted beyond restoration. Yeah, what and, a wicked hypocrite! And and, and, and his his position his position is absolutely hilarious. It's the Quran is actually only affirming the remnants, and the remnants are the parts that agree with Islam. And the parts that agree with Islam are these prophecies that we can twist into confirmations of Muhammad. And one of the ones one of the ones he quotes. One of the ones he quotes is the one that's actually about Yahweh, and he says it's about Muhammad. So De Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy thirty-three, is saying it's no. about it's about Muhammad. He just so that notice that's a separate video. We definitely won't get to that one until tomorrow. But uh, separate video. Adnan calls Muhammad God. Yep. I mean, how how, how many how many different ways can this guy apostatize with every single oh. video he points out? Every single video he points out, I'm a new, I'm apostate in five more ways, ladies and gentlemen. We should, I should make a video how many different ways uh, Anand Rashid has renounced Islam, and it'd be like 180 different ways that he has yeah. that he has renounced Islam. That's gonna be funny stuff. All right, we read. Oh, hang on. Side note. This is a comment here. Uh, Muslim says, David and Sam, show me where the Quran, where in the Quran, Allah describes the Trinity falsely. And I'll accept Jesus Christ as God and start yeah, reading sorry. the gospel. Now, uh, uh, my Muslim friend, we, we have a we have a bad track record here of Muslims <sighs> saying they will they will convert. What was the last one? He said, "If you show me where Jesus said he's Lord, <laughs> I'll convert to Christianity." That's right. And yeah. we immediately yeah. showed it. We immediately showed him where Jesus calls himself Lord, and then the Muslim backed down and started attacking the Bible again. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, l let us break this down for you. The Quran nowhere accurately describes exactly. the doctrine of the Trinity. The only times it seems like it's attempting to describe and refute the doctrine of the Trinity, it gets it wrong. So that's our position. Um, notice, if you're going to say, no, 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 Allah has to be very clear on what he's saying, then you've completely contradicted the entire Quran, because even though Allah constantly brags that he's being clear, he's hopelessly unclear. Uh, and anytime we ask for a clear verse, you never give us any sort of clear verse from the Quran. Uh, but Sam, yes, just run, uh, just run our Muslim friend yeah. th through <clears throat> how the Quran gets the doctrine of the Trinity wrong. And if Very. he's actually, if he's actually trying to refute our doctrine of the Trinity, he yeah. should accurately explain what he's refuting. Because when he says, "Ha ha, I'm refuting your doctrine," and the only things he says are false claims that no, that none of us believe in then all we can conclude is that he doesn't know what he's talking about, like uh -huh. on every other topic where he doesn't know what he's talking about. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Christians, for those of you who don't know the verses, it's chapter 5, verses 73 to 75. <clears throat> and then it's also in chapter 4, verse 171. But if you want to know what the three means, because the Quran does not use the precise technical terminology that was developed by Christians, even in the Arabic language, to refer to the three persons, like al-aqanim, right, al uh, you don't find that language so put that aside it says three if you want to know what the three means read chapter 5 verses 73 it says there are disbelievers who say Allah is the third of three continue reading to 75 pa 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 pause that Sam uh, how many how many Christian groups say that Allah is the third of three that's the thing. If you, if you can show me one, I'll, I'll make sure you take shahada. So, 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 find it, man. so he's, he's referring to people who say this Yes. And yet, we don't know of anyone who says this. We don't know if anyone no, says, no. yes, the, the doctrine of the Trinity, it says that Allah is the third of three. I've ne we've never heard of anyone who says this. Go ahead. Yeah, because here's the problem with saying Allah is the third of three. If Allah, you mean the person whom we call the Father, the one who sent Jesus, even though Allah is not the Father, no Christian says the Father is the third of three. Within the Godhead, he's the first of three. So even that's wrong. But beyond that, if you mean Allah as the being of God, the being of God is a third of nothing. There's only one being of God. So either way, Muhammad didn't get <clears throat> his his facts straight. He didn't know what he was talking about. But let's put that aside. If you want to know what it means to Allah to be the 33, guys, don't take my word for it. Read 74 to 75. It mentions Jesus and Mary eating food. And it says, you see, it says his mother was a righteous woman. And Jesus the Messiah is a messenger 
the messengers before whom all passed away. In other words, he's just a messenger who dies, and his mother was a saintly woman, and they both eat food, and it says, see how we made their cl signs clear to, uh, clear to them? In other words, if Jesus and Mary need to eat food, and Jesus is a messenger who died like the messengers before, then they're only human. What more proof do you need, Christians, whoever he's talking to? But hold on, folks. I don't know of any Christian group I'm talking about a genuine Christian group at the time of Muhammad. We're not talking about schismatics and heretics that believe that Allah, Jesus, and Mary are three gods and Allah is the third of three so that the Quran needs to then show Mary is simply a human being who ate food and Jesus is a mere human being. That I can understand if you want to say Jesus is merely human because we believe in God in the flesh. But in the Quran, Jesus isn't the one God. He is a God separate from Allah, and his mother is another God, separate from Allah, and that's confirmed in 5116. If you want proof that Jesus, Mary, and Allah are this triad of three gods, 5116, this fictional conversation that's supposedly going to take place between Jesus and Allah, when Allah says to Jesus, Oh Jesus, did you tell mankind to take you and your mother as two gods besides Allah? So let's do the math, folks. Here again is a reference to Jesus and his mother, two gods besides Allah. Jesus, Mary, two gods, Allah, third God. So you are disbelievers who say Allah is the third of three. That's not what any genuine Christian group has ever believed. And I challenge the Muslims to show any genuine Christian group that believed that at the time of Muhammad, you won't find it, it doesn't exist. Muhammad was ignorant when it comes to the Trinity. All right. Hope that answers your question, and uh, whether you convert or not, that's between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, all right, so you ready to go on to the next clip, Sam? Yes. Yep. And again, I, I do not know. What's that? Yeah, that's no, you're the one who's who's run out of time. I'm, I'm free, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll probably go through. I want to get to that one clip just so because that'll be an awesome separate video, and oh, then we can uh, uh, maybe we'll we'll see what we'll see what time we have left. But we got over sixteen hundred people uh, watching live, so that's awesome. All right, so here again, I do not know if it's in this next clip. I'm think I recall it being early on, so I'm thinking it's in this next clip. Oh, so by gonna... the way, Dave, not to cut you off, I think a Muslim admit we're right. Abdul Samad Dajul, because Abdul Samad is a Muslim name. He goes, "Thank you for your answer. This is an error in the Quran." Abdul Samad Dajjal. That's a Muslim name, Abdul Samad. Yeah, no well, Christian calls no, himself. He, he's, the, he's, the, he's the one who posted that comment. you kidding me. He no, just that's admit where it is an error in the Quran. He admits it. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. May you come home, friend. Come to Jesus, your only hope of salvation. He admitted. Glory yeah. to God. Go Amen. ahead. All right. Well, once again, we're going back to Anun Rashid. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if this is the clip that I was looking for when Anun is once again going to apostatize and completely uh, bash his own prophet, then I'm going to pause once it finishes so that Sam can finish listening to it. Sam is listening to it on a delay. So we're going to play the clip. If it's the correct one, I will pause, and then uh, this will be a funny separate video. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I give you Adnan Rashid. Also, Christian missionaries have been using another strategy to defend the Bible, and that is by mocking Islam mocking the Muslims, mocking the Prophet of Islam. This strategy is also not working because the Bible still remains corrupt. This is not a defense of the Bible. By mocking Islam and the Prophet of Islam or the religion of Islam, the Bible is not suddenly going to become uncorrupted. So this is a very important point I wanted to raise. Mockery, mockumentaries, okay, uh, laughing and joking and sarcasm is not going to take away our arguments and our belief. We will continue to love Islam and our Prophet as we always did. And it is a condition of faith for the Muslims to love our Prophet. Now, when Christian missionaries want to take the message of the Gospel, the loving message of the Gospel to the Muslims, how do you love someone by insulting someone they love? Imagine if I came to Christian missionaries and the first thing I said, your mother is X, Y and Z. Would they listen to me? Would they give me a willing ear? Will they ever listen to what I have to say about God Almighty and the love I would be claiming for them? They would never listen to me. So you do not take the message of love to someone by hating on people they love. So this is a very important point I wanted to highlight very quickly in the beginning.
Uh, I heard it. You got that, Sam? Uh, this guy's really, uh, that's it. He should retire. He destroyed Islam. This is a joke, man. All right. So Adnan's position is <laughs> that we right. shouldn't be making fun of <laughs> Muhammad because, you know, if you're making fun of Muhammad, that's that's no way to reach people. You can't reach people by making fun of their religious beliefs or by making fun of someone that they love. Now, I'll just go ahead and start off here, Adnan, by saying that if your prophet didn't want us making fun of him, he shouldn't have done a lot of different things. He shouldn't have had sex with a nine-year-old girl. He shouldn't have walked around covered in semen so that his, his child bride had to constantly scrape the semen off him. He shouldn't yeah, have had his yeah. followers uh, sucking on each other's fingers. He shouldn't have allowed his followers to hire prostitutes. He shouldn't have taken the wife of his own adopted son. Um, he shouldn't have uh, swore an oath to stop having sex with his slave girl and then come back and said, uh, oh, uh, yeah, Allah says I need to break that oath. Allah's ordering me to break that oath. Uh, shouldn't have delivered the satanic verses, shouldn't have gone around saying that he's a victim of a magic spell that gives him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. He shouldn't have done basically anything that he did if he didn't want us making fun of him. How are we supposed to ignore all the hilarious stuff that he did and just keep quiet about that, right? We can't, we can't hold that kind of, uh, that, that kind of, we can't hold in that, that much laughter, right? It, it's impossible. But all of that aside, all of that aside, Sam. Yes, sir. Did Adnan just once again become an apostate? Yes, Adnan yeah, became did. an apostate again? Yes. Oh, I have I, got I have got to hear this. How did Adnan yeah. just apostatize again? He does it every I, clip, every not just every video, every portion of every video. He apostatizes yet again. How did he do it this time? I just want to glorify Jesus Christ for raising people like you to expose the truth because Adnan, your career is over, your religion is over, you decimated Muhammad. Why? Let me show you how Muhammad treated unbelievers. I'm going to quote Muhammad and Abu Bakr's examples from the sources written by Muslims, not Jews or Christians. Okay, let me show you how Muhammad spoke. This comes from Mishqat al-Masabi. Guys, all of this you'll find in our articles on answeringislam.net, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Now, this comes from Mishqat al-Masabi. <clears throat> I'm reading the English translation by James Robson, and it's page 1021, volume 2. Page 1021 of volume 2. So this is in one of my articles. Pay attention, folks, what Muhammad says. Ubay bin Kaab told that he heard Allah's messenger. It says God's messenger, but I prefer to say Allah. Allah's messenger say, if anyone proudly asserts his descent in the matter of this pre-Islamic people, tell him to bite his father's penis. And that, do not use a euphemism. Let me read that one more time, David. Tell him to bite his father's penis and do not use a euphemism. Say it graphically. Insult that man. Tell oh. him, go bite your father's penis, dude. Hold on, Sam. Hold on, Sam. Didn't these people love their fathers? Of course they did. And yet Anand says that us criticizing Muhammad would be like, you know, walking up to someone and trying to reach them and then talking about their moms. But Muhammad specifically orders his followers to, to talk about the people's dads and even to bite their penises. I can't believe no. that this actually came from the Prophet of oh, Islam. But can I show you what Muhammad's best friend, according to Sunnis, who became the first Caleb said to the unbelievers? Uh, I've, I've, got comes, to, I've got to hear this. You got to this one because this one, man, I was like, man, I was Abu Bakr, bro, man, you and me maybe could have, you know, chilled. I like that attitude you got, player. But anyway, this comes from the English translation of the history of Al-Tabari, the victory of Islam, volume 8, page 76. Then Urwa said, Muhammad, tell me if you extirpate your tribesmen, have you ever heard of any of the Arabs who destroyed his own race before you? And if the contrary comes to pass, by God, by Allah, I see both prominent people and rabble who are likely to flee and leave you. Pa 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 pause there, pause there, Sam, pause there, Sam, because I want people to understand how reasonable that was. So one of the pagans, one of the pagans says to Muhammad, hey, Muhammad. Look, you're, you're, you're going to war against us. There are, only two, there are only two possibilities here. Either you win or you lose. Uh, 
If you win, then you've you've exterminated your own people. Do you really want to go down in history as someone who exterminated his own people? So that's one possibility. The other possibility is you lose, in which case your followers will, will abandon you and they'll recognize they shouldn't be following you. Either way, this doesn't look good for you, man. So just stop yeah. attacking us. That's what he's yeah. saying. Seems like a very reasonable point. Now, Sam, show us the incredibly reasonable manner that Abu Bakr responded, Abu Bakr, who's one of the rightly guided caliphs in Islam, and surely he, too, is a pattern of conduct worthy of Muslim uh, 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 imitation. Here is the standard that Muslims must follow, a standard that puts us Christians to shame. Abu Bakr said, go suck the clitoris of Alat. Let me repeat it again. Go suck the clitoris of Alat. And then it says, Alat was the idol of uh, Thaqif, which they used to worship, would we flee and leave him? Now, I want to read this one source because it comes from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab at Tamimi. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab at Tamimi. He combines these two traditions to show that Muslims are justified to insult people. He combines these two traditions to show that Muslims are justified in insulting people. It comes from Mukhtasar Zad al Ma'ad, the English translation, page 383. Guys, pay attention. Let me read it. And in the words of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to Urwa, suck a lad's clitoris. There is permissibility of speaking plainly the name of the private parts if there is some benefit to be gained thereby, just as he, Muhammad, permitted a plain response to the one who made the claim of the jahiliyyah by saying, bite your father's penis. And for every situation, there is a fitting saying. Who would have thunk it, David? All right, now, uh, uh, Sam, I, I, I wanna I wanna discuss that for just a moment, but um, uh, I mean, didn't the didn't the unbelievers of Mecca even come to Muhammad's uncle to try and 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 work out uh, work out a scenario where he would stop making fun of their gods, and didn't didn't Muhammad? Refuse? Weren't they the ones yes. who were trying to be like Adnan says they should be? Hey, let's just stop making fun of each other. Let's stop making fun of of, of the gods and, and so on. Here, can, can we stop? Can we stop doing that? And Muhammad is the one who yes, refused that. Absolutely. So, so that's kind of one thing. But guys, don't miss don't miss this point, right? Sam, Abu Bakr said uh, was making fun of the pagans and says, "Go suck a lot's clitoris." Now, a lot. Okay. Did did they love a lot? Did they love the pagan goddess? They Alat? loved and adored Alat Al Manat. They loved these goddesses. And yet, Abu Bakr's response to a a completely reasonable request and a, a completely reasonable and rational point by one of the pagans, his response is to say, in effect, go perform oral sex on your goddess. Right, right, and note right. notice, Muhammad <laughs> is saying, go bite your father's penis. Abu yeah. Bakr, go perform oral sex on your on your goddess. This, these are like the nastiest, most insulting ways you could possibly talk to someone. That's how Muhammad and his companions responded to the pagans. And yet we have Adnan Rashid here saying, that's the wrong way to go about it. You'll never reach people like that. I, Adnan Rashid, have the true way to reach people, and I condemn anyone who would do it like that. And he still doesn't realize, Sam, according to uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 65 of the Quran, you can have no resistance against Muhammad's decisions. Well, Muhammad has displayed in his life how you're supposed okay. to respond. Surah 33, verse 21 says that Muhammad is the pattern yeah. of conduct. And Muhammad, yep. the pattern of conduct, showed how you should react Act to people's false religious beliefs and yet Adnan says no don't follow Muhammad he's completely wicked and immoral I reject Muhammad's decisions about how to do these things and I still don't realize how many different ways I've become an apostate what yeah. else do you have for us I gotta read this part because folks Muhammad didn't just insult unbelievers the hadith say Muslim and I have an article on this folks you need to listen to this and by the grace of Jesus make a clip and David is gonna make a clip out of this Muhammad was such a nasty person, he would insult and curse his companions who loved him. But then Muhammad justified it. Let me read it. Okay, this is from Sai Muslim, so you guys don't take my word for it. Sai Muslim, number 6285. Even the subheading. Subheading. Guys, let me read the subheading for this particular section of Hadith. Chapter 23. He upon whom Allah's apostle invoked curse, whereas he in fact did not deserve it. It would be a source of reward and mercy for him. So let me read. Aisha reported that two persons visited 
Allah's Messenger, and both of them talked about a thing, of which I'm not aware, but that annoyed him, annoyed Muhammad, and he invoked curse upon them and hurled malediction. Not only did he curse them, Allah curse you, he insulted them, he cussed them out. And when they went out, I said, Allah's Messenger, the good would reach everyone, but it would not reach these two. In other words, he's thinking he's a prophet. You just damned these poor souls. You cursed them and you cussed them out. He said, why so? I said, because you have invoked curse and hurled maledictions upon both of them. He said, don't you know that I have made a condition with my Lord saying this? Oh Allah, I'm a human being, and that for a Muslim upon whom I invoke a curse or hurl malediction, make it a source, source of purity and reward. Guys, understand what Muhammad just did to justify his insults? I made a deal with Allah. Allah, if I hurl a malediction, I curse someone, I cuss him out, and I invoke your wrath on him, doesn't deserve it? Can you then turn out in a blessing? In other words, Muhammad justifies his temper tantrums by saying, hey, don't worry about it. David, if I cuss you out, it's going to be a blessing. So let me cuss you out. Let me wish death on you. Let me wish hell on you and your children. And the more I do, the greater the blessing. Gee, can you cuss me out some more? But here's the worst one. In the Hadith, Sahih Muslim, number 6297. A young orphan girl, Muhammad wished early death on her and she started weeping bitterly. Let me read it because it's worth reading. Sahih Muslim, number 6297. Anas bin Malik reported that there was an orphan girl, poor girl, girl. Folks, don't forget Muhammad was supposed to be an orphan. If anyone should have sympathized with this poor girl, it should have been him because he was orphan, right? There was an orphan girl with Umm Sunayim, who was the mother of Anas. Allah's messenger saw that orphan girl and said, oh, it is you? You have grown young. Now, what a stupid man. And you tell me to respect this man? Notice what he says to this orphan girl. May you not advance in years. May you, in other words, may you not get older, may you die. That slave girl returned to Umm Salam weeping. Umm Salam said, oh daughter, what is the matter with you? She said, Allah's apostle has invoked, invoked curse upon me that I should not grow in age, and thus I would never grow in age, or she said, in my length of life. Umm Salam went out wrapping her headdress hurriedly until she met Allah's messenger. He said to her, Umm Salam, what is the matter with you? She said, Allah's apostle, you invoke curse upon my orphan girl. He said, Umm Salim, what is that? She said, she, the girl states, you have cursed her, saying that she might not grow in age or grow in life. Allah's messenger smiled. Surprise, Umm Salim. Allah's messenger smiled and then said, Umm Salim, don't you know that I've made this term with my Lord? And the term with my Lord is that I said to him, I'm a human being and I am pleased just as a human being is pleased and I lose my temper just as a human being loses temper. So for any person from among my ummah whom I curse and he in no way deserves it, let that, O oh Lord, be a source of purification and purity and nearness to Allah on the day of resurrection. So David, I'm not going to curse you. I'm going to insult your wife and your kids and you better love it because I made a deal with my Lord. If I say... You are a wicked, ugly-looking kafir. May you die before the next year. That's going to be a blessing, brother. So say, thank me, thank me, David. Maybe, maybe the uh, maybe the same applies to Allah. So that when He's calling Jews and Christians the worst of creatures in Surah 98, verse six, it's actually praising us, right? Um, I want to add a, a couple uh, quick quotations here from the history of At Tabari, volume six. This is from page 93. Totally contradicts what many Muslims believe. The Messenger of God proclaimed God's message openly and declared Islam publicly to his tribesmen. When he did so, they did not withdraw from him or reject him in any way, as far as I had heard, until he spoke of their gods and denounced them. When he did this, they took exception to it and united in opposition and hostility to him. Notice it specifically says, that the pagans had no problem with Muhammad preaching Islam. They had no problem with it. They only objected when Muhammad started attacking and denouncing their gods and goddesses. Pages 94 to 95. They sent one of their number, whose name, uh, whose name was Al-Mutalib, to Abu Talib to ask permission for them to enter. He said, here are the sheikhs and nobles of your tribe asking permission to visit you. He told him to ask them to come in. And when they had done so, they said, Abu Talib, you are our elder and chief. So give us justice against your nephew 
and order him to desist from reviling our gods, and we will leave him to his God. Notice what they're saying. Stop making fun of our gods and goddesses, and we'll leave him. We'll leave him to his Islam. He can go around preaching. Just stop mocking our gods and goddesses. And here we have pages 101 to 102. Um, a Muslim asked, What was the worst attack you ever saw by the Quraysh upon the Messenger of God when they openly showed their enmity to him? He replied, I was with them when their nobles assembled one day in the Hijr and discussed the Messenger of God. They said, we have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. We have endured a great deal from him. So, Adnan, he condemns it. He condemns criticizing wow. people's religious beliefs, criticizing uh, criticizing, we, we don't do this, but critic, you know, if you were to say something about someone's mother or someone's father or something like that, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't mock people's gods. You shouldn't mock people that they love. And yet we've already seen, we've already seen uh, Muhammad cursing people. He cursed even, he called on curses even on his own followers. Uh, he told, he told people to, to go bite their father's penises. His closest companion, Abu Bakr, said, uh, go suck your god's clitoris, yeah, go perform really. oral sex on your goddess. And the description that they had from people who kept trying to reason with him, like Adnan, these were the Adnans of the time. Muhammad, could you please stop just making fun of people's religion? That's not nice. That's not a. That's not the way to win people, man. That's not the way to show people that you're right. Going around making fun of people's gods and goddesses. Can't we just stop all this mockery and 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 get along? And, and then you can you can you can have your religion, man. We don't have a problem with it. Just stop mocking our gods and goddesses. And what did they say? They said we have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. So they, they have never encountered this, not from Jews, not from Christians, not from pagans, no one. They've never seen this. We have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, thought you're, thought you're not supposed to do that, reviled our religion, thought you're not supposed to do that, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. But I thought you're not supposed to do any of that, according to Adnan. So once again, Adnan has condemned his own God, his own right. prophet, never realizes, his own his own prophet's companions, he never ever realizes it. Why? Because Islam is just built upon this foundation of hypocrisy where we get to do whatever we want, but you have to obey all these rules that we would never dream of applying to ourselves or our prophet. Adnan, that time is over. We're holding exactly. you to the standard of your prophet, whom you've just condemned. We're holding you to the standard of your God, whom you've just condemned. We're holding you to the standard of your prophet's companions, whom you've just condemned. You apostatize every single video you post. You apostatize over and over and over again. Our job is simply to point it out and watch your religion self-destruct. Glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who will take Muslims captive for his glory, for their salvation. Be magnified, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I am actually we still have over uh, sixteen hundred live. I'm actually out of time today because yes. uh, I have to. Uh, my wife has to get set up to do a uh, a conference a conference that she's doing um, online. Uh, Sam, do you want to yes. go? Since we were we only got started here, do you want to go live for Europeans again tomorrow? Yes, I'm free, God willing. Lord Jesus willing, tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. And we'll con we'll continue with these video clips, ladies and gentlemen. I did just I did want to respond to uh, uh, our Muslim friend earlier who recognized the the Quran's error in discussing the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, people, uh, he he said, I need to read the gospel first. Um, if you're still in there, Abdul Samad, if you're still yes, in there. Um, if you're free tomorrow, let us know if you're free tomorrow, because even though we're going to be going through Anand's claims and showing how he almost everything he says he gets wrong, he completely contradicts his own God, his own prophet, he keeps apostatizing without even realizing that, we're going through that because... This is what pretty much every Muslim apologist keeps doing. They just don't realize it. We're trying to help them. But if you are, oh, I'll do something. Yeah, he says he'll, he'll come tomorrow. So basically, Sam, uh, we are going to respond to Adnan, but we will set aside 
15 or 20 minutes to basically go through the gospel, bring up some passages, and uh, you know, show uh, show our friend where he can he can uh, he can check out Amen. some sources and so on. All right, everyone, uh, have to get going, but Lord yep. willing, we will be back tomorrow. Yep. Keep praying for us and our families, my daughters, that God will bless us, protect us, and preserve us for his glory in Jesus' name. He's risen, risen indeed. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. All right. See you all tomorrow.